Ah, yes, it's that time of year again. The time of year where Americans celebrate Thanksgiving while international listeners sigh and think to themselves, bet all the headlines are going to be out of date this week. So with apologies once more to the audience beyond our national borders, especially the ones north of us who got like zero mention of their Kmart version of Thanksgiving last month, I must once again talk about our weird ass holiday. A holiday we celebrate by not strangling our racist uncles and our family members reward us with pie. It's a holiday about thankfulness, togetherness, and family, which we commemorate through thankless arguments with our relatives. And it's telling, isn't it, that in a day all about coming together, the thing that will most divide us as a nation will be religion. Right? That's not exactly a bold prediction there. Many of you, in fact, won't even be at the big family feast because you don't share the family's preferred God. Some of you are missing it voluntarily. Some of you aren't. And some of you are just wishing with every fiber of your being that you could be missing it. Of course, to be fair, religion isn't the only thing that's going to keep us apart or internally divided this holiday season. Politics will do it too. So will bigotry. But let's face it, at this point, even distinguishing between religion, politics, and bigotry has drawn a fine fucking line. I mean, sure, there are liberal Christians who probably share most of my political views, but generally speaking, those aren't the ones starting fights about Jesus at Thanksgiving dinner. Right At this point, the religious and political identity of most evangelical Americans have all but fused into a single thing, and the central core of it, the adhesive that holds it all together, is bigotry. Right? What is it but permission to hate LGBTQ people, permission to cling to sexism, permission to continue to believe that America's wealth and prominence comes from some inherent superiority rather than slavery and oppression? And when I talk about the lines between religion and politics fading, I don't just mean the demographics line up. Given the unquestioning allegiance, disprovable claims, and revisionist history that undergirds MAGA Republicans, it's hard to say that it isn't a religion at this point. And, and even if you want to quibble with that distinction, you have to admit that the goals of this political movement are religious. Their goal is to weave their religious doctrines into the fabric of our national government such that it'll be impossible to tease them out without the whole thing unraveling. Religion divides us. It divides us on the small scale in terms of our family. It divides us on the national scale in terms of our politics. It divides us on the international level in terms of our wars. But again, that's not a side effect, right? That's what religion does. That's the evolutionary advantage that it offers. It divides us from them. And it does so so effectively that we won't mind taking their shit when the going gets tough. Anthropology is, generally speaking, really kind in the way that they phrase it, right? They talk about the growth of religion as a way of unifying a tribe. And in a sense, that's true. But it's only unifying it to the degree that there's some other religion out there, right? Like if we all shared the same beliefs, it wouldn't even be meaningful to talk about the unifying aspects of religion. We'd be no more unified than a train full of Manhattan commuters that can all agree this is the end train, right? There can't be an in-group until there's an out-group. And that's what religion provides. It may provide an us, sure, but the survival advantage that it infers is in providing a them. I mean, consider vulgarity for charity, right? Here we are, a, a group of people that are unified by our lack of religious belief. I mean, we're also unified by our appreciation for a finely aged poop joke, of course. But by and large, the defining characteristic of our community is atheist. And sure, that provides an us and a them, right? But only semantically. To wit, not a goddamn person in the entire history of vulgarity for charity in the years that we've been doing this has ever told us that we should make sure that the money goes to atheists. Nobody's ever asked what the religion of the people that they were helping was. Right, or how we were going to use these charitable donations to further atheism. Hell, the people getting the help never even know it was a group of atheists that gave it to them. We have enough us to bring us together, but not enough them to push people away. There's a weird trap that you fall into when you're pushing back against a divisive thing because you have to be against againstness to get there, right? It's like the so-called tolerance paradox. If a society is tolerant to everyone, it must necessarily be tolerant of the intolerant and thus cannot exist. But that's an illusory paradox, right? If a society is tolerant to everyone, there are no intolerant people by definition, right? So we strive instead for a society that values tolerance and suddenly the paradox disappears. In the same way, atheism can unite without turning us against religious people. And to some degree, we can be an us without a them. And you see that with vulgarity for charity, right? But you also see it across millions of tables this year as we sit down to Thanksgiving dinner or as we get up. You see it when the argument with Uncle Larry ends with, you know, you helping him to his car. 
And the fight with Aunt Kathy ends with her reluctantly agreeing to get her goddamn COVID booster. And the ongoing war with your brother-in-law ends with you making a bed for him on your couch. You know, it's really easy on days when we're thrust together with our shitty families to forget the point of all this. You know, sure, we're, we're all here to support one another. That's in the nature of community. But our community is here to help them. They are the victims of religion that first spurred us into action. And as hard as it might be to do sometimes, we need to remember to thank them for that. 